Hi guys, welcome back to B Adventures. Uh, we obviously have uh, another gear review. We got a three-in-one special. That is right, a three-in-one. So let's get started. I'm going to talk about my top three travel gadgets at the moment. I want to keep it simple and things that I actually use, as you guys should probably know by now if you've seen my other reviews. I actually go through the time and effort to try and test things and see if they actually work or not. You know, the reality is a lot of manufacturers try to sell things. They're trying to run a business, but not everyone tests the validity or the uh, the practical use side. So let's get started, eh? This is not on Oakley. <laughs> this is just an Oakley pouch I got actually. Uh, I just managed to find it, and here's my first one. It is a Sony power bank. All right, uh, they're often called external batteries. Yeah, just let the camera focus. They're often called external batteries. This is really scratched up, as you can tell. I've dropped it a few times. Just trying to get the camera focused. It's too shiny. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm using a sensitive camera at the moment. It's too shiny. But yeah, I've dropped it a few times. I've obviously carried it in my pocket and in the pouch. And this has been a lifesaver. This is all it came with. The battery and a USB uh, cable. It uses mini USB. So all you do is you plug it in. Hold on. Let me just get that going. See? You plug it in. And just say you've got your smartphone. Oh, I've got that the other way around. You charge this on your computer or a USB port, a USB adapter. Okay, and that's how you charge it. And then in order to use it, it is the reverse, exact reverse. See, you just put USB. Yeah, see how it's green? It means it's got power, plenty of power and it's active. And then it's red when it's charging or when it's low battery, red or yellow. It changes color so you know. So it's very simple and user friendly. And see, I plugged it into my smartphone. It just made a ding ding. And let's see, yeah, it's, see, it's got the battery. Sorry, my camera again. Battery charging. Oh, my case is flapping around. Yeah. So, pretty straightforward. Now, USB stands for Universal Serial Bus, and it is truly becoming universal. I'm not saying, see, I'll turn my camera phone on anyway. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best, I'm saying it's universal. So, you know, cameras use USB, phones, uh, you know, tablets, computers, blah, 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 blah. So what I found is, uh, to get to the point in practicality, I found I got one, at least one full charge. It depends on how you use your phone and the quality of the battery in your phone itself. Uh, in these Sonys, I found them very energy efficient. I typically got two charges. That's just me. Maybe I don't use it the same way as other people. Other people use it for everything, business, email, Facebook, YouTube, uh, you know, all manner of social media, everything, the whole lifestyle, phone calls and text message. So the problem is these smartphones are so powerful now and we use them for so much, they're like computers. They actually have a computer inside. So they tend to use up a lot of energy. So anyway, my point is, especially if you have an iPhone, uh, I, I gave this to a friend with an iPhone. His iPhone was low battery. I think he's got a new one, iPhone uh, 5 or 6. He's got one of the newer ones. Uh, his battery is terrible. He's always got low battery. Uh, so we're traveling together. And he just said, hey, um, damn, my phone's about to die. So he had his own iPhone proprietary cable. Just plugged it in, USB, and charged his iPhone. Gave him a full charge, uh, you know, as we were driving along. And there was still juice left in the battery. There was still plenty of energy. So I still continued to use it uh, that day and charge my own phone. And then when I got to the hotel, I just plugged it in uh, to a power socket and, and charged it uh, back up again. I got this in 2013. That's now 2017. My goodness, so I've been using it a good three years. I've been using it, like I said, traveling everywhere all around Southeast Asia. I've been using it all around Australia. Great item to have. It's lasted me three years. It's done extremely well. Uh, so yeah, very practical and handy item. And you will, you will need it, especially if you're probably an iPhone user or you have a phone that has a poor battery, poor battery life, or you're just someone who uses your phone a lot. Start with something like this, see how compact it is. Fits in my hand. As I said, I even put it in this little pouch. If you really wanted to, you could even wear it on your belt. But I just do this to protect it. And, you know, and that way the cable's all together. And I can also put other things in here too, especially while traveling. But especially if you are a heavy phone user, like you might, you might sit your phone down and watch videos or do all sorts of things. You know, you're naturally going to use up more energy. Just get a small pocket size one like that. And if you're if you're needing one of those larger, huge ones, uh, backup batteries, then you've probably got other problems. It means you, you're using up so much energy and you're using your phone so much, yeah, you might want to transition to something else like a tablet or a laptop or something or 
or simply just get a bigger battery. But that one I love just because it's so compact. I, even um, charging it, by the way, I would often connect it together and just put it in my pocket. So I'd carry the phone and the battery together charging while I was in my pocket. It does get a bit warm if you do that because there's all this electricity flowing through. But, you know, it's fine. Okay, so moving on. So that's number one. Uh, travel gadgets. Number two. A universal wall socket. Uh, wall charger. I have used this through all my travels. Again, you know, I got this probably 2014 or 2015. I can't remember because I was using one that didn't have USB. See, this one has two USB ports. Exactly what I was talking about with the previous item. Yeah, we can just leave it there. See? I could just plug that in and charge my battery or charge my phone or camera or whatever, anything like that. You know, anything USB compatible. That's why it's so handy. So just say, see these sockets, they're flexible. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it uses an angled one or, or a parallel style one, you can adapt. Okay. As you can see, it's got the markings USA and Australia. Sorry, I just let the camera focus. Yep. USA and Australia, Europe, and then UK. So what does Europe look like? Hmm. Oh, there we go. So you, you press down there. There you go, spring loaded. We got the European style one. Funny enough, I was using that a lot in Philippines, but anyway. Um, and also that's the funny thing too, you know, in developing countries like Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, I found Thailand and Vietnam, so I'm jumping around, had this Australian style socket. Okay. I found Thailand and Vietnam uses these angled so I'll just get the camera to focus. Come on camera. Yeah, okay. So that wasn't really an issue. Um, so all my Australian power plugs typically worked in uh, Thailand and Vietnam. But in Philippines, it was a total mixed bag. Some might have the angled ones. Some might have the straight US ones. That was the most common, the straight US ones. And sometimes I, I even saw these. So let's go back. Europe, okay. I saw these in Philippines too, these, these two, these weird ones. So the point is inconsistency, out of spec. Um, that's why, again, this is so handy in any country. Sometimes they're out of spec and obviously this one here, this must be UK or Europe, yep. Okay. So this only costs a couple of bucks, you know, it's very affordable. Uh, I still use it in Australia because I have items I've bought from all around the world. It means I can adapt it, meaning even if it's a different, let me show you, uh, let me get an item. I love this wall charger, but the problem with this wall charger is, see, it uses like a US style connection. Okay, that's okay. See? I was doing this while traveling too. Oh, excuse me. Come on. Okay, so you can mix and match. Excuse me, guys, doing this on camera. I've locked it. I've locked it somehow. Let me... Okay. Anyway, so I can put my Canon batteries in there, obviously, or my camera battery, and then obviously plug that plug that into a, another power socket or some kind. You get the idea. I can reverse it. Sorry, that makes that's why it wasn't working. I can reverse it. So see, I can put it into the local connection or into the wall, and do, I've done that upside down. It did work. Um, but you know, a power board, you know, any any solution will do. Uh, again, two USBs, so it's very very convenient. I could charge two USB items at the same time. And if I was lucky, I could adapt it like this as well and charge my battery as well. Okay. I do like external um, battery chargers, by the way, guys. But hey, much of a muchness. So very practical. As I said, I've been using it in Australia too for other international products that uh, I've bought. And uh, yeah, very, very handy. And you, you will need it. You'll need it at home and you'll need it uh, while traveling. You know, that way you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about what country and what connection you're using. And last but certainly not least... Uh, a nice pocket flashlight. This is actually my everyday carry here in Australia. Again, let me just get that to focus. It's commonly known as the MXDL. Okay. But much of a muchness, meaning, you know, there's many manufacturers that might uh, copy it or call it something else. I got this for about three bucks, three dollars. Okay. You can certainly find it um, probably around the world. It's got this little clip. This clip is not the best quality and it's too wide i would prefer a thinner pen style clip so it's not very useful so sometimes i'll put some cord through here and hang it like a lanyard well but usually i just carry it loose in my pocket um yeah so i carry this every day around australia especially if i go out at night or in the afternoon i'll just show you guys what i'll do i'll turn down the lighting 
just to show you. See, uh, most people say it's around 80 to 100 lumens, depending on the power of your battery. Okay, it's it's perfectly fine, especially just for local use. The reason why I say that we tend to have good street lights and good, you know, building lights and office lights in Australia, probably the same in in America or other countries. So just having a pocket one like this is great. I often use it to inspect behind computers in offices or underneath desks, meaning you drop something, you lost something, or you're trying to work out the wires behind a computer. You guys know what I mean. You're like, which wire goes where? Just lighting it up and then putting away, putting it back in my pocket. I gave this to a friend. Uh, another one, I bought a bunch of them. Uh, he uses it in a furniture warehouse, even though it has professional lighting and it's a great big furniture warehouse. There's heaps of dark spots. He's constantly inspecting underneath furniture. I'll stop doing that. I might wash out the camera. Um, but you guys get the idea. Uh, yeah, back to the lumens. Uh, you know, I don't have scientific equipment, but 80 to 100 lumens is actually quite a lot. People make a big deal about these tactical flashlights like this. This is awesome. And, you know, like they need 300 or 400 or 600 lumens. That's ridiculous. You can actually blind yourself. So, again, just to inspect quickly, to find a lost item to, or to just light up a dark room or a dark area, this works just fine. Just for a media area. As you can see, it's very lightweight. Let me find a pen. Let's see if I can find a pen. Okay, see, so like a standard, uh, you know, office style pen. Not much, not much thicker, yeah? Yeah? Now, again, it's only cost me $3. So I'll, I'll tell you guys a quick story. As you know, I love telling stories. Um, there was a girl in Philippines I met, and she was actually from Australia too, and she was a bit upset. And I said, look, uh, look what happened, because we'd been talking. I met her, you know, touring around. And she said she had been using her iPhone, she had an expensive iPhone at the time, it was the latest. Oh, just mucked up my phone. She had, I think it was an iPhone 6, I think it was the latest one at the time. Very expensive phone, especially in Australia, guys. And she'd been using that LED. Let me just get the camera to focus. Can you see that yellow? Sorry, guys, just getting this camera to focus. See that yellow item there? Just below the camera? There's obviously the camera, and then there's the LED. Now, that's actually quite bright, and it does work. And obviously, you can use your phone like a flashlight and blah, blah, blah. But oh, there's a couple of issues I take with that because a lot of people get complacent and, and say that. One, your phone is a very powerful device. You need it for phone calls, messages, email, uh, maps, GPS, blah, 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 blah. I would much rather use my phone for those more powerful things than waste the battery on the flashlight. Yes, it's nice to have. And I know that I've always got a flashlight when I've got my phone. But if you've got low bad phone, you can't call for help. Okay, you can't use Google Maps, you can't use uh, Uber, you can't use your Facebook, blah, 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 right? So that is much higher priority. It's about prioritizing. That is higher priority to me. This is in my pocket or locked away. I don't want to go losing it. Now, that poor girl with her iPhone was using it as a flashlight in the Philippine jungle. I kid you not, in a remote area. It was El Nido, Palawan, by the way. Remote area. She's using it as a flashlight. Oop! She lost it. She lost a brand new iPhone. She bought it just before the trip. Poor girl. Uh, I'm not making fun of a poor girl, you know, I really feel for her because I know what it's like to lose a phone and it's not cool. They looked through the jungle. I think she even got help. That, you know, she she tried all night. It's dark in the bushes. Sorry, you lost it. Okay, she's not getting it back. So they even went back in the day. They couldn't find it. It was gone. And it was a very thick jungle area, meaning it probably fell down a ridge just the way it was. It was like a hill. So poor girl lost her very expensive iPhone while traveling. She's now got no no way to contact, you know. No phone to be contacted on or contact other people. She's lost her, her con connectivity, meaning she was using her phone to check her email and Facebook and whatever. Okay, so tough luck. She sacrificed the phone to use it as a flashlight. Now, what if she had one of these? A $3 pocket flashlight. Even if she lost it, dropped it, pff, three bucks, who cares? Yeah? I'd much rather lose a $3 flashlight than lose, this is a $600 Sony, by the way, than lose a very expensive smartphone. Yeah? Again, this is, this is a high priority to me. This, I can even give it away. I can give it to a friend. I can lend it to someone. Hey, it's dark. Don't worry. Take mine. You know, take my flashlight. So that's why I say top travel item. Uh, quite often when you're traveling, you are in dark spots and dark areas. So I know I talk about it a lot, guys, but that's, that's how important it is. And you only really appreciate it once you're in that situation, like that poor girl. When I'm traveling, I do tend to use a more powerful one. Just because when you're traveling, you tend to be in dark areas. It's just the way it is. You're not in the comfort of your own home with good lighting like I am now. Okay, but this is just my everyday carry, but obviously three bucks. Uh, you know, you could carry traveling too. You could carry a couple of them or give them away to friends.
And if you want to upgrade and get a more powerful one, I paid about six or seven dollars for this one. Uh, even more powerful. I'll be careful. I'm gonna wash out the camera. This, <laughs> see that? I'll do that again, guys. I'll turn off the light. I'll do that one more time. But this is actually what happens to the human eye. See how it washed out the camera? I'm just gonna do it really quick, alright? I don't wanna annoy you. See that? See how it washed out the camera? I don't wanna annoy you guys. That's what happens when you turn this on in the middle of the night. You, you can actually blind yourself. Or other people, alright? So you don't need to go crazy getting the most powerful lumens all the time. If you feel the need, if you're always in dark areas, sure. Or you're very open areas like countryside areas, sure, you'll definitely need a more powerful one. But for everyday carry, compact, does the job, and certainly, um, yeah, save you losing, you know, something more expensive like your phone, or, you know, injuring yourself or something like that. Okay, guys, there's the 3 for one special. Get my phone out of the way. There's your 3 for one special. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my Facebook page, the, main, the YouTube main page. Uh, I am an Amazon affiliate, so you'll see links below in the description section should you want to check out this stuff. And uh, as usual, thanks for watching.